So today we're going to learn about punctuation to prepare you all for the ACT. First, we'll start off with a few learning outcomes. The first will be by the end of this lesson, you will be able to determine whether to use a comma, dash, colon, apostrophe, period, or a semicolon. The second learning outcome is you'll be able to write sentences by the combining clauses and phrases using the appropriate punctuation. The first set of punctuation we're going to learn about today is a stop punctuation. And what is that exactly? It's used to combine two independent clauses by using a period, semicolon, or a comma, followed by a fanboy, which is just a coordinating conjunction. An example of this, and with the sentence below, which definitely needs a little bit of fixing, is the band known as U2 was formed in 1976. The original name was Feedback. Obviously, we need a little bit of a break between 1976 and there, and there are three ways that we could do that. The first would be to add a period, just forming those two separate sentences. And you can see the period right in between these two here. The second solution would be just to add a semicolon in the same area, still creating that nice even break. The third would be to add the comma and then insert a fanboy. And the fanboy we chose here is but, and it just reads the same but with that nice separation. The next type of punctuation we're going to talk about is the comma. And there's a few uses for the comma. The first one is you'll insert after an introductory idea. So in the sentence above, you can see the inter introduction is those first couple words there. Originally influenced by punk rock bands, comma, the members of U2 believe that music proficiency was not necessarily required to be successful. The second use for a comma in this example is to set off the unnecessary information. And in this sentence, the unnecessary information here is the word war. The band's first international hit wasn't until their third album, War. Another use for comma is after every item of a list. In this example, we separate blues, folk, and gospel music. The Joshua Tree was influenced by blues, folk, and gospel music. Another type of use for comma is between the list of two things. So for the unfor unforgettable fire, comma, Larry Mullen laid down looser, funkier drum tracks. And the one we just talked about was that use of fanboy is with that stop punctuation. The last three are the colons, dashes, and apostrophes. And what's super nice is that the colons and dashes actually follow the same rules and can be used interchangeably. So in these two examples of sentences here, you can see we have the semicolon and the dash in the same spot, still creating that nice break, as well as the commas with the list at the end. Also, the apostrophe is usually what you see in everyday language. You combine two words to make it one with that use of apostrophe. So we have let us not listen to a beautiful day, and I have heard it too many times. Showing it up with let's, and I think you got a perfect sentence. Now, let's all check for our understanding here. We have two example sentences. The first one is, Maddie has been paying attention, but does she know where to put the comma? The second one is, Maddie has worked with many different organizations, the American Cancer Society, the Mayo Innovation Scholars Program, and the National Association for Campus Activities. Are the sentences above correct, and what could you do differently? Well, for example, up above here, there are many ways to put in a comma as we discussed above, but we chose to add the comma here and put in a fanboy. In this sentence right here, we decided to put in a nice dash where we could have used a semicolon. We also have a list with a conjunction and the fanboy as well. So what questions do you have for me? If you have any questions for me, please see you later. Otherwise, thank you for listening to my presentation about punctuation.